This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. I am super glad you're here. Our first story is a little apropos given the fact that we've just gone on a road trip this week. It's about the reliability of US charging networks for EVs. And thanks to a new survey by JD Power, what we all knew is official. Tesla comes out top when it comes to charging network customer satisfaction. Scoring charging networks out of a total of 1,000 possible points, JD Power scored both level 2 public charging networks and rapid charging networks. While most DC networks scored similarly to the previous year, level 2 networks showed a marked drop in reliability, with one in five EV owners reporting that they did not charge their car after visiting a level 2 charging site because it was broken. Tesla came out top for DC and level 2 charging reliability with the supercharger network scoring 739. Chargepoint came second with Electrify America and EVgo struggling behind. Rivian published its second quarter figures at the tail end of last week and as expected it posted some sizable losses as it ramps up production of its electric vehicles. In terms of production, Rivian said it produced 4,401 vehicles, 72% more than the 2,553 it made in Q1. Deliveries were also up by 264%, growing from 1,227 in the first quarter to 4,467 in the second. While growing operating expenses crested $1 billion versus $580 million a year ago, Rivian's quarterly gross profit was minus $704 million, leaving it with an adjusted loss of $1.47 billion, or $1.62 per share. Like Tesla before it, Rivian is finding growth costs money. It was five years ago when Tesla first unveiled the Tesla Semi and this week it officially closed the order books for the same as it prepares to commence deliveries this year. At the same time as it ceased taking orders for the Tesla Semi, it published three short teaser videos and updated the truck's specifications, confirming that a choice of 300 and 500 mile battery packs will be available, stating that with a full 82,000 pounds on board, 37.2 metric tons, the Tesla Semi will average under 2 kilowatt hours per mile, 124 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Tesla says the Semi will have three independent motors instead of the four originally promised and charge to 70% in 30 minutes at a Tesla Semi charger. While Tesla has confirmed that it will begin deliveries to customers later this year, it's not clear how many trucks will be delivered. One of the identifying features of an all-American muscle car, aside from the low-slung design and huge amounts of power, is the throaty noise that emanates from its exhaust. Plenty of electric cars have come to market that offer muscle car-like performance and styling, but not the sound. This week, Dodge unveiled a concept that it thinks handles that concern. Enter the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT Concept, an all-out muscle car that features an 800-volt battery pack and high-horsepower all-wheel drivetrain married to an electromechanical gearbox and paddle shifters. While full specs aren't available yet, the company is eager to talk about what it calls the Fratzonic Chambered Exhaust. Rather than pump nasties out the end, this exhaust is basically a resonance chamber for an undercar mounted speaker that produces a synthetic exhaust tone. <laughs> Compensating much? A few weeks ago, we covered the rumour that BMW was readying itself to transition to 4680 form factor battery cells, and this week Reuters expanded on that story. It claims anonymous sources familiar with the matter confirmed that BMW has signed a supply contract with Chinese battery specialists EVE Energy, with EVE becoming BMW's primary supplier of cylindrical cells for a new range of electric vehicles it's hoping to bring to market in 2025. While the majority of dedicated EV companies, Tesla, Rivian and Lucid to name a few, always preferred cylindrical cells in their vehicles, the majority of legacy automakers have, to date, stuck with pouch cells. But after multiple high-profile problems with pouch cells, often related to issues stemming from thermal management and production faults, cylindrical cells are becoming increasingly sought after. 
Volkswagen's ID Buzz has generated a lot of, well, buzz around the world as potential private and commercial customers eagerly get in line to put down a deposit to own one. Pre-booking for both vehicles opened in Europe in June, with official market-by-market -market order books opening a month later. This week, Volkswagen confirmed that it's amassed over 10,000 confirmed ID Buzz and ID Buzz cargo orders to date, about two thirds of the total production capacity for the 2022 model year. While order books have yet to open in North America, where it will only be available in long wheelbase configurations, only short wheelbase variants can be ordered in Europe right now, with a long wheelbase expected to follow shortly thereafter. Where are the orders the highest? Norwegian customers have made the most orders for ID Buzz to date, with Germany and then Benelux following. The US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA for short, finally had its request to have full self-driving activated on one of its Model 3 test vehicles this week. Previously, the agency had not been invited to test the beta full self-driving, despite high driver safety scores. But after a letter it sent to Tesla back in January went live this week online, Elon Musk said, OK, we'll turn it on. In the same week, however, NHTSA sent an official request to Tesla to ask about the driver-facing camera that is found in all Model 3, Model Y and Model S and Model X made in the last two years. The US safety agency says it wants Tesla to answer questions laid out in a nine-page document by October 12th, with the questions reportedly focusing on how the cabin camera monitors and enforces driver attentiveness while autopilot and autopilot full self beta is in use. When we have more on this, we'll share. One of the key features of the Ford F-150 Lightning is the ability to power your home directly from your truck in the event of a power cut. That is, as long as you have the pretty expensive Ford Home Integration System. Power companies are already starting to take note, and we've already covered several accounts of power companies starting up trial programs with Ford to examine how vehicles like the F-150 Lightning could be used to help deal with peak demand periods by feeding power back into the grid rather than firing up a Pika power plant. This week, Duke Energy became the latest utility to work with Ford on just such a pilot program, with Duke Energy filing for approval with the North Carolina Utilities Commission to use the F-150 Lightning to carry out a demand response pilot project from 2023 onwards. Tesla unveiled its Optimus robot at 2021 AI Day, and ahead of this year's AI Day, where we've been promised a functional prototype, Elon Musk has been talking about Optimus's target market. In an interview with China's Cyberspace Administration, Elon Musk detailed some of the uses for Optimus. Talking candidly, he said that the bipedal form was essential if we want robots to adapt to the human world and to be capable of doing what we do, noting that his ultimate vision was that bots could carry out plenty of jobs outside of the industrial sector, such as taking care of domestic cleaning, garden maintenance and caring for the elderly. He even suggested that within the decade, people would buy a Tesla bot as a birthday gift for the elderly people parents. This gives me Bicentennial Man vibes mixed with a little iRobot and maybe a smidge of Gigolo Joe. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. As promised, Aptera has now unveiled its latest Aptera solar electric vehicle prototype, the Aptera Gamma. Externally, there have been a few tweaks here and there with a new large centre-mounted light cluster that I'm going to assume exists due to US regulations for three-wheeled vehicles. There's also a new logo design on the front and, importantly, a charge port door modification that slides the licence plate to one side rather than up to facilitate charging. Although, for the first time, there's no Tesla connector, just a hole where a charge connector would go. Showcasing the sports car-like seating position, the interior shots now show a new internal cluster with large centre touchscreen and smaller display pods behind the half-wheel yoke. Launch live in San Diego and we'll be there, so hopefully we'll get a chance to see it. Before we go to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are, and you are in Aotearoa, you could totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you, and includes everything from the incentives you can get to charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. Follow the link below today and start your journey. We have covered plenty of different electric vehicles on this channel. In fact, everything through planes, trains and automobiles have been converted.
When it comes to smaller electrified modes of transportation, we've of course seen the growth in personal mobility devices, ranging from electric bicycles through to scooters, one wheels and more. And for the most part, those scooters and one wheels were designed as low speed commuting solutions. Except InMotion has just revealed its latest creation, the Challenger V13, a monstrous one wheel with off-road tires, three kilowatt hour battery pack and rugged design. The really astonishing thing is its claimed top speed though, 90 kilometers per hour, or 56 miles per hour, with a lift speed of 140 kilometers per hour, 86 miles per hour. Its price is a cool $4,000. And finally, it's no secret that I and Kate Walton Elliott both love classic cars, and a classic car converted to an EV is frankly another car saved from the scrap heap. And in the UK, where classic cars are far more common as daily drivers, the 2CV drive shop has just announced a brand new turnkey conversion of the iconic French 2CV van. Called the EV, the electric converted 2CV sticks to the original internal combustion engine origins of this iconic vehicle, offering a choice of battery packs starting at just 10 kilowatt hours for 60 miles, 96 kilometers of range per charge. And while you can spec a larger battery pack, the folks at the 2CV drive shop want to remind customers that for the UK at least, a smaller battery pack results in faster charging at home and more than enough range for most situations. The price though, about 40,000 UK pounds, is quite steep. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch and you'll help Aotearoa switch off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back with more awesome content very soon, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And of course, we'll be back for our next Roundup show next weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.